Hi, everyone. Uh, I would uh, like to share with you a little bit today about the whole subject of how we reveal ourselves in God. And uh, it really involves the whole subject of how we grow spiritually. I want to start off this series with just an introduction. We're probably like 20 minutes or so. So if you bear with me, uh, after that, I will break it down into some smaller videos that will um, that will give some also practical application and exercises. I, uh, in thinking about this subject, there was a time some years back when I lived uh, in a remote area far away uh, from, uh, from Westerners, but I lived with a bunch of Christian monks. And I was always fascinated with these guys of just their ability to remain focused on God. And they were telling me these extreme stories of some of their friends that would tie their hair to the ceiling so they won't fall asleep at night while praying. And it was a little bit extreme, but I, I really was, was intrigued by how can they grow into this kind of capacity. Because for me at that time, I felt like, I don't know about you, but you know, I spent time with God, I get bored with it, maybe reading my Bible or I fall asleep or I, I want to be focused, but I get distracted all the time. But this really inspired me to start seeking God more on what kind of spiritual diet can I follow that I can grow spiritually. And uh, I went through a time where I was, um, I spent time uh, fasting, seeking God, and I fast for uh, days or even weeks on end. I had times where I went in, in isolation, I went up the mountain and sitting there a whole, a whole week spending time with God. And other times I, I stayed up all night and uh, tried to spend time with God through the night as well. And there was times I would read the Bible six or seven hours straight. Um, and um, I, I, even as a non-musician, I was like uh, practicing how I can write my own songs to God and how I can really grow my own personal worship. And, you know, in this, all of this, I think there was a time some striving that came with it. But for me, it, I felt like I, it was God distilled it for me that I got to a place where I felt like I had a specific uh, exercises or disciplines that I can follow. And those are things that I want to share with you guys today that uh, will be really beneficial for you in your devotion times and that you actually can build your, your, your spiritual muscle. And um, so, you know, I, I spent some years at university as well that was very much focused on developing my mind. But, you know, what kind of things do we do that actually develops our spirits? Uh, just because that's not uh, what will stay behind. No, no, that's something that is eternal for us and it's, it's important. Um, and if we, you know, if we have a weak, if you have a weak spirit or if you've not developed or grown spiritually, we, you literally become, we become like a baby that will drink from its mom and fall asleep. So you actually never get to receiving the nutrition you need. You have, you know, three minute devotion times and it's hard to really lock in and spend time with God. I mean, you might um, go to a, 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 you know, you might follow conference or worship uh, gatherings. Um, as you know, almost like sources of, of, of spiritual water, as opposed to learning the habits of how you can dig for water wherever you are, even in your room, without needing to, to go there. Because we, what we do is you can go to these places and you, you, you consume or you take, you don't contribute to a worship time, just because we're so needy and we, we become needy and dry and almost spiritually clumsy uh, in, in our focus in God and our discernment. And um, so, you know, in David, in 1 Samuel 30, verse 6, he said, it says, and David strengthened himself in the Lord. So there's a real place of us uh, not only receiving strength from one another and encouragement, but how do you strengthen yourself alone uh, before the face of the Father? And, you know, we, we, we're not loved more when we pursue God more, but we do grow in our capacity that we're able to actually remain for longer before his presence and as a result i mean he's, the word says he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him so we we can grow spiritually there's benefits to that as well and in in the bible we use words like we pray without ceasing and put on or clothe yourself with the image of christ it talks about to be clear-minded and self-controlled so that we can pray and um you know, it talks about fan into flame. So, so a lot of these things are talking about how we can, there's a progression that needs to happen in your spiritual life of going from milk to solids. 
and um, that you can literally, like, you know, we, uh, we, we, you can see people who really value good diet, exercise, and they are ripped because they go to the gym. Uh, but the same things work, uh, uh, we can apply spiritually as well, that you can, you can grow your spirit literally like a muscle. Um, and, um, you know, if we look at these things, we also need to define what, what is spirituality. Um, because is it more spiritual for you to be in isolation for 20 years and it's just you and God? Or is it more to be integrated with society and to be like Mother Teresa? Is that true spirituality? And our model is, should be always to go back to Jesus and what he did. And Mark 6, we see Jesus, he's ministering to the sick, he's praying for people. And then he, the next day, he, it says early in the morning, he went out a long while before the sun came up. He went to a deserted place to pray. So there was this clear pattern of he's, he's integrated with society and then he consecrated where it's just him and the Father. And then six chapters later, in Mark 6, he's talking to the disciples. He sends them out two by two. They are integrating in society, ministering, giving out. And then he says, come aside for a while to rest. And there is that he could recognize that, that there was uh, the need to fill them up again spiritually, that, um, you know, like a, like a knife that needs, you need to stop cutting and sharpen and then so that you can cut and you'll catch up again. And um, so, I mean, with these things, you, there's two very clear ways that you can see that how we can grow. I've talked about this consecration and integration. You know, Math, um, um, uh, Matthew 6, 6, it talks about go, to your room after you've closed the door pray to your father who sees you know in the secret place and um and at the same time you see in john 4 jesus is at the well he's ministering to this woman and then he says my food and my drink is to do the will of the father so there's nourishment to give out that's the second commandment and there is nourishment to sit in a closed room with the father and um so, uh, so, so we see the integration of the first and the second commandment in our spiritual nutrition. I mean, you, you, you can probably lock yourself up in a room and spend your whole life there just praying, and you might be very imbalanced because you need to, it needs an outlet in order for you to actually uh, grow and for that to be, to be balanced. That's even why Jesus, when he prayed the last prayer for the disciples, says, I pray, Father, that you do not take them out of this world. So there's a, there's a place for us to be in that, and it forms part of our, uh, of our spiritual diet as well. And so, so you need, we, we, are, we need to train our spiritual focus and our capacity, and that this can be done through spiritual disciplines. Now, if I say discipline, a lot of us don't like that word, um, but don't, get put off by the terminology of it. If I, if I say disciplines, it's basically just things that you can do that can develop a spiritual posture um, towards growth and ability for us to commune with God. And it's a capacity that we can grow in. And so this would be things like worship or prayer, uh, fasting or solitude or, or isolation or listening to God or more, you know, when we give, uh, reading the word or worship or different things like that. And um, we, we require a diversity in that. Um, you know, sometimes I've uh, uh, been told by people, listen, all you've got to do is read your Bible. But if, we, if you only read your Bible, you grow in knowledge and understanding and all these things, there's maybe less application of that. But what can happen is you know and they don't know. Others don't know. And it, it becomes where we feel superior and they are inferior and we become negative and critical. Uh, and we focus more on the correct, what is the correct thing to do as opposed to the sincerity that needs to, to be there as well. So the, yes, the reading the word has a place in it, it aligns our thoughts, but there's also places that, well, of things like worship and other things that described in the Bible uh, that, um, that God has encouraged us to do. And you know, it, it, th there are different things needed that we are able to to look like Jesus and to act like Jesus, where you're both uh, kind and you are powerful or dangerous to the enemy. And, um, 
we are these things happen in the private and then also in the public place where there needs to be uh, things that we can practice in order to to grow spiritually and um, our um, you know there are exercises that, that will stall you or quieten you and there are exercises that will stir you and um, the stirring has often got to do with anointing and the power of God and then there's also the stilling that has got to do a lot more with the presence of God and we need to be carriers of of both those uh, uh, areas I mean the results of these things is that you would be able to remain focused on God for longer. I mean, how long do you sit with God until you feel like my mind is just getting distracted? That capacity is something that we, we can stretch through this and it's, it's the first result. The second one is you can develop the, a forcefulness of your spirit, meaning you, are, you're, you have a deep uh, spiritual mass or root system that, that if there is a need for you to minister for a longer time, you're able to, you have a, a sense of breakthrough anointing over your life there's a strength a strength that is inside of you that you can produce also uh, a greater level of accuracy where you are regardless of your emotions if you're tired or 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 uh, if people pull on you emotionally uh, you have the ability to be consistently accurate in hearing God's voice because your emotions have been aligned and your spirit have been been bold what will also happen is our stamina can develop and if your stamina developed, it's it's like I always use the example. It's like the, the the cistern of a of a very busy toilet that gets flushed all the time, and more people are using it. Meaning you can give out and you get filled up so quickly that you're ready when there's another situation where you can give out more. So there's your fruitfulness will increase, and we grow by doing the will of the Father, and God is glorified when we bear much fruit. Um, the benefits of spiritual disciplines are, I mean, are so many, but we, we will walk with a less of awareness of ourselves and a greater awareness of God. So our God awareness uh, will increase. Um, your desires, what you want, become aligned with the desires of, of God. Uh, we, we don't strive, we're able to abide. Um, we can rest without becoming passive. And, um, you know, we, we minister not from a place of where it's a necessity or an uh, a obligation, but it's a, it's a real overflow for us. And that becomes just so much easier. Your, your thoughts would, will become quiet, that you can hear the whisper of the Father in the midst of chaos or difficult situations. And literally like Jesus, to be asleep in the boat regardless of what is happening around him. You will uh, grow in, in, a, in a depth in your relationship with God. And that, um, yeah, you'll have a greater capacity without necessary uh, burning out. So um, I, I broke, for me, I broke it down into four exercises when it comes to our relationship with God upward. Meaning the first commandment, it's horizontal. It's what you do in the private um, uh, with God. And it's when we set apart and con or, or consecrate it. And I will look, that's a secret place. And I will look later maybe at some, some other exercises that you can do that can balance that out for us. But the four, the four exercises, I call it the four W's. And it is the, the whole area of where we worship, warfare, uh, we wait on God and the word of God, those four areas. And uh, I've practiced these extensively. Uh, I, there was a time I did about six hours a day of this for an entire year. And I never grew bored or tired of God. And I, I felt like it built me to the place where I was able to focus on God uh, 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 with a lot more, um, yeah, just determination. So um, <clears throat> the reality, we need to grow in, I, I, th I personally believe it's important to develop all these areas. For instance, something like worship. I'm tone deaf, I'm not naturally musically gifted, but you know, when my kids write me letters, they don't go buy uh, these complicated, beautiful word cards from the shop. They wrote me letters, especially when they were younger, full of spelling mistakes. And I was like, I didn't want my wife to correct that because it was more precious if it was just the way they wrote it. And so even in worship, God wants to hear that version from your or my mouth more so than the perfectly formulated worship songs that we sing along. Um, so what this is not, th these things, I, 
I don't see them as, as uh, formulas, but it's more principles. I uh, don't see this as being something that we separate secular and spiritual. And um, it's not something that will happen instantaneous. This, this, it takes time. And you might need to practice this for a month or two. Uh, you know, the, if you run for the first month, it's terrible. Everything is hurting and shaking. And, um, and once you get to, into a place where you can run with a friend and have a conversation, as a sense, it becomes enjoyable. So we need to, you, be, you will need to push through the detox phase of these things where you become aware of, where's my phone? Because I'm so used to getting distracted by that during my devotion times. And where you need to be weaned off certain lifelines almost in order to, to latch onto the one who called himself, the only one who ever called himself the source of life. And uh, it will, these things require consistent repetition like any muscle will grow through consistent repetition. Sporadic exercise pr will produce uh, injury. And that is something that is, it will require time as well. You need to put time into this. But you, with your current fuel system, you can't do more on that system. You can do the same or come by, um, but you can't do more on less. And, and, and if we want to be able to displace works of the enemy, we want to be, people who are spiritually fit and growing, able to hear God's voice, we nourish, ministry is always an overflow for us. You cannot do that without growing in some of these areas of discipline. So that's the mouthful, it's over. Uh, we're gonna break it down into some smaller videos and there will be some practical application towards the end of this as well. So see you in the next video.